Hi all, uh, with this session, uh, we look at how Intuit manages uh, traffic dialing at scale uh, within Service Mesh. So uh, today's agenda uh, is basically like, I'll give a, a quick intro about Intuit and we'll see uh, the problem statement and how the things get complicated when we run at scale and uh, the solution uh, uh, which uh, Intuit is using and how uh, we handle at scale uh, with that solution. So uh, today I have uh, Venkata along with me, uh, myself, Anandan, a senior software engineer and Venkata is a staff software engineer. Uh, we work for a service mesh team uh, at Intuit. So let me give you a quick intro uh, about uh, Intuit and what we do. So uh, Intuit's core uh, mission is to power prosperity around the world. Uh, basically, we are transforming from a tax and accounting software provider uh, to a global uh, financial technology platform uh, where we do the hard work for our customers. Uh, with over 100 million customers worldwide uh, using TurboTax, Credit Karma, QuickBooks, and MailChimp, uh, we believe that everyone should have the opportunity to prosper. So uh, that's a quick intro about uh, uh, the Intuit. Uh, jumping on to the today's talk, uh, let's see uh, the problem. Uh, so uh, coming to the uh, infrastructure at which uh, Intuit runs, uh, Intuit manages around uh, 250 KH cluster, uh, which form the multi-cluster uh, Istio service mesh. And uh, we run around uh, 7,000 uh, namespaces, uh, which includes around uh, 77K uh, nodes, and uh, which uh, runs around 9,000 uh, services deployed across uh, multiple regions. Uh, in the KH cluster. So uh, that is the scale at which uh, uh, the services run. Uh, so coming to the problem statement summary, uh, uh, at Intuit, the services uh, evolve at a rapid pace. Uh, this uh, 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 like rapid pace development can be due to uh, the infrastructure changes, uh, the underlying infrastructure change, or uh, maybe like the service owners are uh, upgrading their services to a new framework or a technology, or uh, moving from a bare metal uh, infrastructure to a cloud, or from cloud infrastructure to adopting the service mesh. And also like uh, ownership uh, of a service uh, can change across teams, which might result in uh, the services needs to be moved from a, a different uh, one cluster to another. So these are some of the scenarios where uh, uh, the migration use case can happen, where the service uh, has to come up with a whole new stack uh, in order to uh, mig uh, support this new framework or this new infrastructure. So uh, the challenge uh, here is uh, this traffic migration uh, for the newer service or the workload. So basically, wherever uh, we are saying uh, services, uh, we meant uh, uh, we mean uh, it has a workload in the industry standard. So uh, basically, whenever uh, we have a use case of traffic migration to a new uh, newer stack, uh, it has to be progressive. Like we cannot directly. Uh, deploy 100% uh, of the traffic to the newer stack. Uh, we have to deploy it progressively. So that is the challenging part. Like how will we do that? So uh, let's take a, a example uh, where uh, let's say uh, there was a service A, uh, which, which was running with a V1 version. And now they uh, came up with a new stack uh, that's called V2. And there can be a scenario where uh, like uh, the V2 version also runs within the same KH cluster where uh, V1 was running, but on a different namespace. Or the V2 uh, stack can run on a completely different cluster. So here, let's say V1 is running on cluster A and V2 is running on cluster C, but they are on the same region. And also the other case can be the service A V1 uh, is running in cluster A and service A V2 is in cluster C, which is of a completely different region. So these are uh, some of the uh, uh, ways where uh, the new stack can be deployed uh, in a different ways. So how will things get complicated as we like uh, get into migration use case? 
So let's take, uh, we have a service AV1, uh, which was uh, being uh, like used by client A, uh, which is basically a dependent of it. And uh, let's say initially the client A was pointing to the service AV1 by using the internal service endpoint that is service a v1 dot internal basically this is the internal uh, mesh endpoint which client a will be using to uh, uh, to reach out to the uh, v1 stack now let's say service a v2 uh, has been uh, created uh, to support a new framework or uh, the new infrastructure and with this uh, the client needs to now uh, migrate their traffic to the newer stack so how will they do that? The common method that uh, usually the service or the uh, uh, service owners follow is to update their code base or, or the config to point to the new V2 stack. So now let's say like uh, the client A has modified their uh, uh, endpoint to reach out to service A V2 uh, by using service A V2 dot internal. So this is easy when we are uh, seeing in terms of one client calling uh, one particular service but let's take like there are multiple clients that were calling uh, uh, service a and now all the clients has to migrate to v2 so now like every client has to update their uh, config repo or their code base in order to point to the uh, uh, new stack so this would have been easier if uh, this was a use case with a usual uh, uh, dns so let's say like uh, whenever we have a migration use case uh, with the DNS, we usually do a cutover by uh, changing the underlying C names so that the uh, traffic migration is seamless. So that is one way. But with mesh, uh, that is not the case. The With mesh, the configs has to be available on the clients uh, so that they know like uh, where uh, to which service, uh, uh, where it is located and how they can reach out to that. So that info will be available on the each of the client side. So it's not straightforward as we uh, see with a normal DNS cutover. So uh, that comes uh, and leaves us with the operational challenges as well. So the operational challenge can be, uh, let's say like uh, the service uh, uh, teams uh, are located in a different geographical locations. And let's say now they have uh, deployed a, a V2 stack. Uh, the service team has deployed a V2 stack. And now uh, let's say some issue was identified and they want to roll it back. So now the clients might be residing at a different time zone. Now they have to communicate it to them so that they'll uh, update their uh, uh, code reports, uh, code repos to point to the older stack endpoint. Uh, so uh, things get complicated here. So how will uh, we manage that? Because the control uh, is not at a centralized place. It is scattered across multiple clients residing in different time zones managed by uh, various teams. So that is the operational challenge which we face here. So uh, this thing doesn't stop here. Like uh, the things will uh, amplify at scale. So let's uh, take a scenario where the service A, uh, V1 and V2 uh, ha has been running and uh, the client A has a requirement that they don't want to migrate 100% of the traffic to V2. They want to migrate only 10% of uh, the traffic to V2 and monitor it so that they get the confidence that the new uh, migrated service is stable to use and then they can uh, gradually uh, migrate it to 100%. And also there can be a use case like a uh, client B uh, wants it to uh, migrate 100% uh, of the traffic to V2. Maybe it is less critical. That's why they want to uh, give a full shot and try it out like how things are working. And also there can be one more case where the client C uh, is a critical service and they don't want to take a risk. So they don't want to migrate it at all until the new stack is called out to be stable. So there can be multiple uh, use cases like this and supporting these use cases for us, uh, clients that are residing across different clusters across uh, which is scattered across and managed by different teams uh, is not easy. And this we have considered just one service uh, which is required by multiple clients. And the same use case can be uh, with multiple services across multiple clients across the entire into it. Like uh, let's say the migration can be happening for uh, service B, service C, service Z, uh, which is in uh, different, different clusters. And those are being used by different, different clients. 
across different clusters so how will we manage all these configurations like uh, who will uh, reach out to like which service with what uh, percentage of uh, uh, traffic needs to be routed to which particular stack so all these things are challenging like how we'll manage uh, everything so that uh, comes and leaves us with uh, how are we doing it and what is the solution for this so uh, to explain that i would like to welcome uh, venkata so uh, he'll uh, talk about uh, how we are solving this uh, particular problem at into it so now that we have seen the problem and the scale at which it can cause uh, uh, operational challenges uh, so let's see the solutions that we adapted at intuit and the path to the final solution uh, uh, that we have designed so the solution is traffic dialing. So what is traffic dialing? Uh, so traffic dialing is the ability to selectively shift traffic across different service stacks without impacting clients. But how do we achieve this? So let's take an example of uh, a single client talking to a single service. So one possible solution to achieve traffic dialing without really disturbing the client is to ensure that you plant a virtual service uh, at the client side so that it continues to use the same endpoint, whereas the virtual service has different rules to dial the traffic between the two uh, service stacks that the client talks to. So let's see how it works. So client A in, is deployed in cluster B and client the service A, which is running uh, uh, V1 stack is running in cluster A and the client is configured to reach out to service A using an internal endpoint services.internal and at the moment the service uh, the client a uh, dials 100% of its traffic to v1 stack of service a however when service a deploys a new variant v2 a new stack for service a has come up now if at all the client a wants to dial traffic or uh, in a weighted distribution to both the variants then we plant a virtual service without changing the client by altering the uh, routing decisions based on the whites that the client configure. So in this example, it is 80 towards V1 and 20 towards V2. So that should solve the problem for one client talking to a particular service with two variants running in parallel and doing a weighted distribution. Okay. So let's see how this gets complicated at scale. Now, uh, there is a service A residing in cluster A and client A in cluster B, which dials 100% of traffic to service A. So service A deployed a new uh, stack variant identified by a different color. And then service A decides to do a weighted distribution between these two using the virtual service the way we have seen in the previous slide. Or uh, the client A can even uh, route traffic or dial traffic between stacks V1 and V2 using uh, APIs. So it is not necessary to uh, dial traffic using uh, weights. So any uh, traffic pattern can be used to dial traffic across different service stacks. So let's see how uh, things get complicated. So we have client A and client B dialing traffic to service A and service B in the following fashion. And let's say client C wants uh, is a new client that has come up. And at some point in time, so along with uh, client A and client B, say client C wants to move uh, uh, the traffic to service A. Uh, however, let's say the client A and client B are not uh, satisfied uh, with the functioning of uh, service A. Uh, the v2 variant of the service a and they would want to roll it back so they they need to once again modify their uh, virtual services and then do the change to reroute the traffic back to the v1 variant of service a so we have two problems here one the owners of these clients they should know the patterns that virtual services support to route traffic so it could be based on weights, paths, or a combination, and its evaluation, uh, semantics, etc. The second one, the changes have to be made uh, every time a service roll, uh, rolls out a new version or rolls back the, an, an existing version. So how do we 
try to handle this at scale with Intuit running hundreds of services and which are consumed by hundreds of clients. So how can we do it? How can we provide a decent solution? So that is so user-friendly. So at Intuit, we have different clusters in which you have clients and services, and we have a global central component called so traffic dialing service. So the traffic dialing service is all aware. He knows where the clients are running in which cluster, and he knows where the services are running and their clusters, regions, everything. And the dependency graph between clients and services is also made aware to the traffic dialing service. So with traffic dialing service, uh, uh, sitting in a centralized location uh, and then having the entire mapping of uh, communication between clients and services, a service owner can simply open up a UI and then decide how to dial traffic from different clients to different service stacks for each of those clients. So, but underneath the global traffic dialing service would create a virtual service. So in this example, with two service variants, V1 and V2, he would create a virtual service to route traffic for all V1 uh, APIs to reach to stack V1 and V2 to stack V2. And it would, it would implant them in the clients that are configured using the UI. So with such mechanism in place, so the client A can easily dial traffic from V1 to V2. And the advantage here is that the owners, the service owners, they need not know about uh, the evaluation uh, complexities that the virtual services offer. So what they see is a simple UI in which they can mention a criteria and then dial appropriate service stack that they want to. So with this in picture, so let's redefine traffic dialing. So a traffic dialing is selectively shifting traffic across service stacks without impacting client from a centralized control plane via a self-service portal, eventually making the process platform agnostic. So let's see uh, the centralized uh, UI uh, with a small demo. So the setup for the demo includes a service A, two clients. So everybody resides in a different cluster. And uh, to begin with, the client, both client A and client B would dial their full traffic to service A. And then we have a new service A stack coming up, so which is depicted by a different uh, color here. And at some point in time, client A and client B would dial a portion of traffic to service A. And finally, they move to uh, the V2 version of service A. And when we mimic a case wherein the V2 stack is of service A is rolled back and the client A and client B would eventually dial their traffic back to the V1 variant of service A. Okay. So what you see here is the self-service portal of uh, the service A. Uh, and then, so you can see a tab called traffic management. So in traffic management, you can see that there are two clients, client one and client two. They are dialing traffic to two uh, service stacks, uh, which is uh, V1 and V2. And you can also see that as of now to begin with, 100% traffic is going towards service stack V1 from both client one and client two. So let's see client one. So client one is a, is a 40 year job running. So we have used port forward so that uh, we can open it in UI. And all the logs coming from client one to different stacks uh, should be visible in this plunk. Similarly, client two is another 40 year job. And the entire uh, logs coming out from client two should be visible here. We should be able to see where the traffic is getting redirected to. So at this stage, to begin with, with 100% dialing happening towards V1. So uh, let me start the 40 jobs uh, of both client one and client two. So let's see where the traffic is going to in client one. So 
no surprise it should go to stack v1 yeah you can see that the 40 hours configured to trigger nearly 100 requests per second and uh, everything is going towards v1 stack yeah, and then we should see a similar behavior for requests coming from client 2 as well yeah, so all 100 requests from client 2 are going to v1 stack yeah so we'll go back to the portal self service portal and then we'll do traffic dialing for client 1 alone to see that both client 1 and client 2 are adhering to the latest configured rules so it is as simple as editing the weights across different uh, stacks so let's make it 50 50 and we leave the client 2 as is then we save the portal should reflect the change yeah so we see 50 50 traffic dialing configured so underneath the central service that we spoke about so it would have created appropriate uh, virtual services uh, for the client wherever it is residing to dial the traffic across different service stacks at the configured ratio and client 2 we did not modify so we should see that the client 2 which is talking to the same service is sending full traffic to v1 so let's see the client 1 logs let's see where the traffic is going yeah so you can see it's a near 50 50 distribution uh, going to both uh, v1 and v2 stacks and then the client 2 should dial the traffic to v1 yeah so the 100 percent traffic is going to v1 stack so at this stage let's modify client 2 as well to do some dialing and uh, let's configure different weights to see that the uh, routing is per client Let's see if the portal reflects the change. So the portal has reflected the change, which means the underneath virtual services are modified by the global central component. And let's see where the traffic is going to from client one. So from client one, it should be 50-50 between V1 and V2 stacks. So it continues to be. And we should see an 80-20 distribution for client 2 yeah so v1 80 v2 20 more or less yeah we see 80 20 as configured in the self service portal now we go back and then at this stage let's say the stack v2 is stable and both client 1 and client 2 would like to dial 100% traffic to v2 stack Yeah, so let's save it and make sure that the portal reflects it. So if we take a look at the client one logs, yeah, you can notice that 100% traffic is going to V2 stack and nothing to V1 after the change that we made. We should see a similar behavior for client two. Yeah, so everything is going towards V2. So at this stage, if the service owner of service A decides to roll back the V2 variant that he has deployed, so all he needs to do is come back to the self-service portal and for all the clients that are talking to service A, modify the weights so that they reach to the previous variant which is the V1. So he can do so by uh, modifying the weights for each client from the self-service portal, let's say 100, zero. Yeah. Save it, ensure that it is successful. 
Yeah. So with that, once again, the global uh, component. So he would once again go ahead and modify the virtual services for all the clients according to what is configured here in the UI. And we should see the result in our Splunk. Yeah. So everything is back to V1 for client one. We should see a similar behavior for client two as well. Yeah. Yes. So this is how we do dialing for multiple services at scale and we allow different traffic patterns to be configured uh, as criteria to dial traffic across different stacks using a self-service portal Attentute. Hope uh, we could explain how Attentute, we extend traffic dialing as a platform capability and abstract it from hundreds of teams that manage different services from knowing the internals of service mesh are the traffic routing complexities involved with a simplified user experience. That ends this session. Thank you.